right, what's up, guys? Welcome to episode 12 of All Access, the Photography Podcast. I know it's been a while since my last episode. It's been about a month. So today, very special guest. They're all very special guests, but today is uh, Zenning with Zay. And she is a fantastic explorer. She's been doing it for a very long time. She's got some incredible work, very creative stuff when it comes to self-portraits. She also happens to be the wife of one of my best friends, Rhythm Ryder. Zenning with Zay and Rhythm Ryder got married at an abandoned prison. That's some dedication to the hobby, guys. What an awesome thing to do. She's going to tell us that story. So let's get right to it, guys. Here we go. Episode 12 with Zenning with Zay. Let's go. All right. What's up, guys? Here we go. Our next episode, we're keeping it with the ladies. Got to bring some more ladies on the podcast. So today we have Zenning with Zay, good friend of mine, longtime friend of mine, and the wife of one of my best friends, Rhythm Ryder. Super excited to have her on the episode. Zay, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about yourself. Who is Zenning with Zay? Oh, well, um, <laughs> Zay <laughs> or Alex. Um mm-hmm. Zay it actually is like a family name, believe it or not. <laughs> it's not okay. just a, a handle. And mm-hmm. um, but like it's more acquaintance acquaintances and working people and friends call me Alex. Um, I uh, have been exploring forever, but um, I would call myself more of an explorer than like an urban explorer because I like exploring everything I guess you could say like much like everybody else that you've had on the podcast I Mm -hmm. didn't realize that other people were exploring abandoned places I didn't know there was a name for it all those things so um outside of exploring I am a PSW I have a million sisters and I'm I am just outdoorsy and um kind of a tomboy yeah (laughs) good you can you call yourself a, a loner (laughs) <laughs> yes. I'm a bit of an introvert. Yeah. <laughs> an extroverted introvert. Yeah, I get um, it. Cool. So how did you get into exploring abandoned places? I guess it just kind of happened. Like, I don't know, as a kid, I was always out wandering in the forest by myself. It was I don't know, I was in the nineties kid, so I came home mm-hmm. when the street lights went on and I was just off in the forest. Uh, <laughs> and then um I would just like happen upon things. I remember there was this old abandoned car that I used to hang out in all the time when I lived in Mississauga and when I was a young kid and then me and my friends would hang out at this abandoned car and we would, there was like a grave nearby and we came up with this whole story. And then as I got older, obviously I would wander further and further. And then when our family went camping or other places, I just always ended up like if there was an abandoned barn or shack or whatever, I would end up going there everywhere. There was always some kind of story about an abandoned house nearby and you kind of end up there. And then as a teenager, you go to the abandoned churches on Halloween and stuff, right? (laughs) So. (laughs) And at what point did you pick up a camera? That was when cell phones came out. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I was always like the last one to get a cell phone. And then the camera phones came out and I was the last one to get a camera phone. But then I like, honestly, I got my camera phone, my first camera phone when Instagram came out and I was like, cause I wanted to join Instagram, which is like, (laughs) (laughs) but that's really what it was. I'm like, Oh my God, Instagram is so cool. I need a camera phone. So I got them both at the same time. And like, I had that phone forever and I just took pictures with my camera phone and used crappy Instagram filters. And then I eventually um, got a camera and just slowly taught myself how to use a camera, I guess. Cool. All right. (laughs) And so so you do a lot of houses, as I do. Um, But do you have a preference between exploring things like mansions or the old decaying houses or churches or hospitals? Like what, what, you know, what sort of what are you more drawn towards to explore? I love the time capsules, like the old ones where everything's decrepit in it. And then I also like the empty shells. I like like decayed places. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's my favorite. I love the old farmhouses that still have all the original wood details and the cool banisters. That's my favorite. Wicked 
floral wallpaper. Yeah. <laughs> that kind of cool. So what do you like? So what do you think then when Jamie drags you to a pristine, clean mansion with nothing in it? What? <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I like, I, I'll do it. Yeah. I often like, I sigh. I'm like, Oh my God. But you know, some of them are pretty cool and a lot of them are decayed so mm-hmm. and then they're still like pretty cool features i like exploring everything like i said earlier so yeah. it, it's just the actual experience itself it takes you kind of like out of reality i i find and um i don't find i'm thinking about other things when i'm exploring so it's kind of like a therapy i guess <laughs> in that sense. right and actually a good segue to a question i was going to ask you later but i'm going to ask it now um, what drives you to the explore? Is it like not literally like driving your car? I mean, is it like an escape from life? Is it, you know, you're kind of driven to the risk? Is it a break from your everyday life? Like what is it about exploring abandoned places that you're drawn to? I love actually like just going somewhere new. I mm-hmm. always have, I always will. I like to find new places and new things. And my family always made fun of me because every Christmas when I was a kid, I'd be like, I want some more new people. <laughs> and like, I always, am, I'm still like that. So even like, I like, like I was say, saying to you earlier, like once I see things posted, I'm really, I don't want to go to them because I'm like, that's not new to me. I know what it is, right? right. I want to yeah. go somewhere and it's new just because I like the thrill of it. And mm-hmm. I find it, yeah, it doesn't, I don't think about other things. It's one of those things in life that you just are <laughs> living in the moment. It's one of those mm-hmm. things that like, you're not checking your phone. You're not, you know, you're present. And that's kind of like rare these days, I find, have something like that. So, yeah. And I find the same thing for me, like, say, you know, if I'm having a stressful week or if something's going on in life, when I'm exploring, it all goes away. And I'm not thinking about it. I'm not thinking about, you know, what happened at work last week, or I'm not thinking about the argument I had with my wife, but we don't argue. So that's great. (laughs) But but I mean, yeah, it just helps me to escape from everything that's going on. And some people laugh because it's such a stressful situation to be in trespassing, but I'm not stressed at all. It actually relieves my life stress completely. I, I hear you there. And I find like sometimes we want to do like the like hardcore stuff. And I'm like, no, we need like a warm up house first. Right. Especially when we're not exploring as much yeah. sometimes. I'm like, we need like an easy breezy, like just plain old, obviously abandoned. We're not going to get in trouble there just to kind of like shake it out of our system <laughs> so that you get comfortable. Cause you know how you can get like anxious. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but then mm-hmm. once you do one, you're like, okay, well, we got this. <laughs> Uh, so you've been doing this for quite a few years, so you must have some favorites that you've done. There are certain things that like you have different reasons, right? Mm-hmm. Um, obviously the body stain house was a quite the experience, um, yeah. for us. So that one, I, I wouldn't say that it was a favorite house like to photograph, but it's definitely one of my favorite experiences because it's something I'll never forget. I mean, I wouldn't even say it was like an enjoyable experience. It's just right. what I'm more, the most memorable, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, then um, I would say Hudson in New York, because that was like my only really Kirk Braid I did. <laughs> and it yeah. was crazy. Like you'd be up several floors looking down a giant hole straight down like four floors you're like oh my god like it was it was really cool yeah and um and then one kind of close to where i live that i was actually just waiting for it to become abandoned and it was a a magical village (laughs) oh right yeah 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 (laughs) yeah that one i absolutely love that one just because it was so unique and like i just i think i had gone there as a kid i'm pretty sure i don't even remember but i'm pretty sure i did you know Mm -hmm. so (laughs) it's just one of those things i knew it was gonna happen so when it did, I was like, sweet. <laughs> Those are some pretty, yeah, it's, it's a hard question to answer because, you know, I've been asked that too. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, I'm doing this for 11 years. I can't remember. <laughs> there's so many. And yeah. then you know, like you said, there's favorites for different reasons, you know, like, like when I did Nanakoke, 
that'll never yeah. be topped. I was, a, I was alone and Jamie did it alone too. And it's like, that's not something I'll ever forget. But then there's like the really good time capsule houses and they're all like favorites for different reasons, you know? Yes. Um, yes. So when I, when I met you or uh, got to know you, you were mostly, I think, exploring either by yourself or one other person. Um, and now you pretty much are only exploring with Jamie. Do you have, prior to meeting Jamie, did you have a preference to exploring alone or with another person? Um, I, it depends. Like, I think mm -hmm. it, uh, there's certain people that like, they just kind of get your vibe when you're exploring. And then there's certain people that don't, you know, <laughs> and like, yeah. <laughs> Like, I remember, like, I had really good friends, and, like, one, there were, they were, like, best friends, there was two guys, and um, one of them, he was super cool, and he, like, so respectful, and was, like, always, like, oh, this would be a good picture, and then the other guy would be, like, I kind of want to break this plate right now, <laughs> you know, and I'm, like, <laughs> what? <laughs> like, yeah. I've never, like, not that he did, right, because I'm there judging him, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like some people are like that. It just like they, they think like, oh, well, I, I broke this law. So now I'm going to break all the laws. But yeah, I prefer alone. Um, I have gone on. I find like then it's not like I have I can just do what I'm comfortable with. Um, go by my own rules, my own morals, um, push myself as much as I know that I can handle and um, I push myself. So <laughs> I've gone on some amazing adventures just by myself, like sleeping in my car, like all over Ontario. So <laughs> yeah, good. And you've and you've got a good partner in Jamie because you know when he was on, we talked a lot about like when he and I would explore together and how much we just got each other. And you know we knew what made each other tick. We knew each other's boundaries, and we also knew we could just like. You know, you go that way, I'll go that way, I'll see you later, we'll come back and we'll meet in the middle at some point. And I, I feel you guys have probably have the same sort of uh, camaraderie and, and uh, co cohesiveness, I like to call it, as he and I had. Um, so what's it like exploring with uh, with your husband? Um, actually, it's kind of like exploring alone. <laughs> we literally <laughs> like walk in a house and we're like, okay, hey, other than like the getting in part, usually even then it's like, okay, I'm going this way, you go that way, we both look for a, a poe like yeah. and then it's like okay i'm going upstairs i'm going downstairs <laughs> like we kind of just stay out of each other's way for the most part yeah. sometimes like we try and scare each other and stuff but yeah <laughs> um so you guys got married at Burwash. um tell us what was that like that must have been something else getting married and i just the, tr I'm, the trek there alone i'm sure you guys had atvs but man what was that like Oh my God. <laughs> so that we had actually gone because we just bought our ATV like a month before we got married for that. Yeah. And um, we, I was like, well, we're bringing Opie, our dog. And I'm like, I don't know if he can run all the way out there. So we got to practice him. So we had actually gone the weekend before and we, and it was damned. Right. And it was all flooded along yeah. the trail. And I was just like, Oh my God. So I had, I had walked through it to make sure we could safely ATV through it without like getting stuck mm -hmm. and we could, um, but it was very deep. Right. So, yeah. um, and it was a beautiful day like that weekend, but then on our wedding day, it was pouring rain. Oh. And um, <laughs> so we had brought a whole crew of people out there. It's pouring rain. There were um, the CN people working on the tracks, like right oh, there. No. So we had oh. to wait for them. Yeah, like it was hilarious. <laughs> and um, like I had done my hair all nice. Obviously, I knew I was going to get helmet head, but I didn't realize mm -hmm. I was going to be soaking wet. And then we um, brought my friend that to do like photographs for us but she wasn't used to quadding either so oh, like on my wedding day i'm in rubber boots walking <laughs> to show her how deep the water is through this because it was probably like you know 100 feet of water that you have to go through on the quad and it's deep water and it had like poured so i'm mm -hmm. like how much deeper is it going to be <laughs> and um so i wanted to show everybody so i'm walking ahead in my rubber boots obviously the water is uh, way above my rubber boots it was like <laughs> up to my knees 
<laughs> like soaking wet. <laughs> so then we get in there, we set up, like it was really it was really cute. We like set up, the girls went one way and got all dressed and everything, and then the guys went the other way. And then we like walked down the aisle on the prison like cell area, and then we got married in the gym area. Um and <laughs> afterwards, like you know how like they usually show their shoes. So I was going to yeah. show my rubber boots and my sister wore rubber boots too. It was really cute. <laughs> but I forgot that I left like my leggings on because they were soaked <laughs> and I didn't want to take them off and put them back on. And they were like funky, like striped. So I looked like the wicked witch of the ease lifting my wedding dress up. And I have these striped like quirky tights on and they're soaking wet. I'm like, Oh my God, it was so funny. But yeah, it was a really good time. And we ended up seeing people on our way out. We're like, we got married there. It was hilarious. It was oh, that's awesome. What a good story. That's such a good thing for you guys to do. That's exciting. Um, so let's get a little more serious here. And we're going to talk about, um, when, when, when I, when I talked to Jamie, we talked about when you, when you guys met and, and how, how, how much you Im- impressed him. And he said a, a controversial statement in his episode. And he said, well, you know, women aren't really doing big things in the hobby. Uh, but then I saw Zay and I saw what she was doing and she was really, she really impressed me. I'm kind of paraphrasing, but the gist of it is he said, women aren't doing big things in the hobby. And it did ruffle a few feathers when he said that. Um, and I, I disagree. But what I want to know from you is what's it like being a female in such a uh, male dominated hobby? You know, what are some of the obvious and not so obvious differences that you see? Um, I think that, um, I mean, I disagree with what he said, but I think <laughs> that women kind of get lost in the sea of men because there are, it is so male dominated, right? Yeah. That it's kind of just like women kind of, and you can kind of see this in a lot of the women profiles out there, that women kind of feel like they have to do a bit more to be noticed. So you see a lot of the costumes and stuff like that. Um, I also think that that's just like a creative thing as well. Like I'm not saying this in girls for doing, I've done it. I love it. (laughs) You do it very well. It's amazing. (laughs) It's a lot of work too, right? Um, But I do think that maybe like as women, we kind of like feel like we need to do a bit more um, to be noticed and to be acknowledged and get like the big ups. Right. Um, And I, I, I don't know why that is because I think that even without all of that, we're just awesome, but whatever. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But yeah, I definitely, uh, I, I see it. Um, But I, I don't think it's as bad as it was. I think there's just as many women that are now as there is men. I think that when I was first starting out, it was definitely, there wasn't really, I don't think there was any women that I could really look up to when I was first coming out in the scene here. So Mm -hmm. um, then obviously you start seeing other people, but I, I don't think it's as diluted now by men as it used to be. So. (laughs) Yeah, I agree. Good. I definitely agree. Um, have you ever been injured or had a close call in, in terms of your, your personal safety? Well, <laughs> I have, I have definitely, um, had a few close calls. I am also a bit of a dummy, I guess you could say. I'm the one that like will do I'm going to check to see if I can get up there. You know, the floors aren't good. Jamie's like, no way I'm going up there. I'm like, I'm going to try it. And then he ends up coming after me, like, all the time, eh? He's so glad that I do it. But he also is like, don't go up there. And I'm like, don't you tell me what to do. (laughs) Right? (laughs) And then I go. But honestly, like, sometimes the best shots are in those really decrepit places so I always was like I gotta get back there and see so there have been times where I've like but I'm I am cautious like I don't just go running up on a crappy floor I'll check but and there's been many times where I have stepped and my foot went right through the floor but Mm. luckily I wasn't just barreling over there putting all my weight at once so I am careful but I am a little bit risque (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> but have you actually hurt yourself though have you ever had an injury no. no i think like other than like scratches and stuff like that i think i other than like going through a few floors i've never actually hurt myself from that like right. i've been cautious enough so 
That's good. Uh, so some of the other girls I've talked to, I talked to Ran about this, and I talked to Trespass Everywhere. We talked about the about uh, the law, and when a when a female explorer gets caught, she's almost got a pass because they're sweet and they're pretty, and they can get out with it, get away with it. Versus if you got guys like me and Jamie with beards and tattoos and shaved heads, it's not as easy for us. Do, have you had any serious run-ins with police and security? And do you agree that it's easier for you to get out of a jam? Yes, one hundred percent. I remember when me and Jamie like first started exploring together, and one time there was like some people like screaming, and like we're in this really decrepit, obviously abandoned house. I'd been in it a few times, you know. It was his first time exploring it, and some people are like at the road screaming, hey, hey. And I'm just like, well, I'm just going to finish taking my pictures and pretend like I don't hear them. He's like, we got to go. There's farmers out there. He's freaking out. And I'm like, no, no, it's fine. Like, <laughs> I'm like, don't worry about it, right? And he's, he's freaking, right? And I'm like, no, seriously, you need to just chill out, okay? <laughs> like, stop acting guilty. <laughs> and then, all like, it was so funny because the guys, like, coming through the field and, like, it was a very overgrown field. So, it was, I knew it was going to take them a while to get to us anyways. I'm like, I have yeah. time to finish my pictures, right? <laughs> and then you can see the body language change. They're, like, screaming and yelling and, hoo, 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 and then they see me and they're like, Sorry. They apologized. <laughs> like, it was so funny. They're apologizing to us. And then I like walk up and the dad was waiting in the car. I'm like, we weren't stealing anything. And he's just like, no, you don't look like you would. And I'm like, yeah, sorry about that. He's like, there's just been other people there that have been trying. Like, and Jamie, after that, he's just like, oh my God, is this really what it's like? Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> but I'll tell you, there was one time when I was trying to do a creative photo shoot. And I uh, was doing like the SFX makeup. So mm -hmm. it was actually a place we've all been to a million times. You know, the one with the saloon doors with the cards on it, like yes. the stage, yes. and that one. Yeah. So I was doing like a theme shoot and I was having like cards sticking out of my face, bleeding and everything. So I had like prepped this whole thing, but then I decided I was going to put the makeup on in the house. So I spent 45 minutes cleaning up the house and clean and, and, and putting my makeup on and does a neighbor not come? Oh. and started screaming and and like he looked at me and then he would not look at me so I couldn't be like sweet little Miss Innocent with like these bleeding <laughs> out, out of my face that was the only time that it was like you know oh, like he was uh, mad he's like I'm calling yeah. cops you guys are up to no good and yeah it was really funny but, oh wow yeah. <laughs> oh good one <laughs> holy shit um, but you've never been charged or anything eh? you've never had like a have you ever had a trespassing ticket yeah. so lucky wow <laughs> it's not luck like i don't know i've been caught by the police before yeah. um but i don't like i can't have a criminal record for work right, right. so right. i i'm very cautious about it i yeah. if it's the police i generally won't run like you go and right. you face it right um and for the most part i don't run i think i've only ran a few times and yeah. um one of them was at that Buddhist temple place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that was because we weren't seen and, and we knew we were going to be seen. So we ran before we were seen kind of thing, right? right? Yeah. Like, so it's like, that's when you run, when you're not already <laughs> caught. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so well, I'm asking everybody this same question. What is in your camera bag? What are you shooting with? Um, I shoot with Canon. It's mm -hmm. just like a Canon Rebel. I don't even know. Like, it's not a very good camera. Uh -huh. <laughs> I originally had Nikon, and then um, I broke it. And then my friend lent me his camera, which was Canon. And um, I bought lenses for it and stuff. And then, yeah, I uh, ended up buying my own. And so that's the only reason I'm with Canon. Okay. But I got my wide angle um, that I use most. And then I... have Got the little 50, which I like to do for my detail shots sometimes. And I do have a zoom, but I actually don't bring it with me very much anymore. And then I have um, a respirator. 
Yeah. And oh, <laughs> my friend just gave me these. Well, I bought them off them, but they're like shoulder novas. So it's like a thing. <laughs> Have you ever watched Brooklyn Nine Nine? No. I oh haven't. Have watch that show for <laughs> <laughs> Super funny. But anyways, they're like this. It's like this thing that hangs over your neck and has magnetic flashlights, and they can go every single way. And they're really good flashlights. Wow. Because I never have a flashlight, and I'm always, Jamie, can I borrow your flashlight? <laughs> and then he gives me a flashlight, and I immediately lose it because I put it down somewhere. So I thought these would be great for me. But although I just lost them and then I found them, I left them in our van house like a week ago and then we went back and got them yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's it. I kind of looked that up. That sounds really handy. They're not actually called that. I'll, I'll have to tell you what they're really okay. called. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so in terms of other people, do you have any like favorite explorers or people who uh, you get inspiration from? Yeah. Um, I love the ladies, obviously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I can think like, I like seashell spells. I always loved what she was doing because she always just did her own thing. And I love that. Anybody that just does their own thing. That's my favorite. Um, Mun Monster is another mm -hmm. one who just does her own thing. Um, Abandoned Beauties, Holly, that girl, I forgot, HHP. She's yep. really good too. Um, and then that Slipknot Lover girl. I like her stuff too. She's mm -hmm. awesome. Um, and then, you know, like obviously the local Ontario girls too. Like um, yeah. I'm really loving Amid the Aband Abandoned, Danny. Yeah. She's awesome too. And um, yeah, obviously Abandoned Ontario. She's great. You know, mm -hmm. uh, she's always doing her own thing too, which is super cool. Yeah. And um, then there's the basics, right? Like all you guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Obviously, my husband. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, well, those yeah. are some good names. You picked some really good ones. But what I haven't seen from you in a long time are your themed photo shoots where you get dressed up. So I know. Are you have any, do you have anything planned? Are you working on anything? So I did. Well, the last time I went to do something was that when I just told you about with the card where I got caught and I was like, yeah. yeah. So that kind of really like made me like a little bit like, I don't want to put all this work in. And mm -hmm. then um, I got a bunch of dresses and stuff and then I gained a bunch of weight. <laughs> so now oh. I'm like, uh, <laughs> so I don't know, like there's just a bunch of stuff that it's really hard to work with sometimes. And then like, I wasn't really feeling inspired for the past like couple of years either. So yeah, I'm sure we'll kind of get things going again. I'm starting to feel my mojo again. So mm -hmm. we'll see. <laughs> Good. Okay. So last question is, uh, is something that I like to include at the end of every interview is if there's a young explorer out there, uh, let's say a girl, a young female out there who's gotten some inspiration from you and the others that you've mentioned, and they want to get into the hobby. What advice do you have for uh, a girl looking to get into the hobby? Um, just do it. Like, be smart about it. Like, don't be reckless, you know, but you got to be that independent woman sometimes. Don't like rely on guys. Um, I mean, like even with Jamie, like I got him doing a lot of the stuff that he does now. Like he wasn't sleeping in his car and stuff, you know, like that's me. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, so like, I mean, I went all over Ontario and I slept in my car by myself. Sometimes I didn't have service. I was smart though. Like if you're doing stuff like that, like I would send my GPS coordinates to my parents with a little message saying like, if, not, if you find me dead anywhere, it's probably here. <laughs> Nicest daughter in the world, right? <laughs> um, but like, I would do stuff like that. Just, you know, just to be safe. Like always tell people like where you're going if you are gonna go by yourself. Um, don't just like go like barreling into like decrepit houses, check the floors first, things like that. And like, don't worry about it. Like, don't worry about anybody else. You don't have to bring people with you if you're like a loner, like, but I mean, if you want to always be safe, like don't go out if you're not, if you're not comfortable, like bring someone with you at first, if you feel better doing that. But I mean, I went by myself at first so yeah <laughs> i mean you gotta do you right <laughs> yeah 
Good. That's uh, that's excellent. So uh, that's been Zenning with Zay, and I'm going to put all of your links down below for your Instagram and your Facebook, which you've started posting again, which is great, so people can start seeing more work and go through and see your old stuff. Thanks so much, Zay, for being here. This has been a really good episode, and I hope people get to know a little bit more about the girl behind the name and behind the pictures, and uh, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much to Zay for joining us for this episode. And now it's uh, Urbex Book Club time. And it's time for me to read you guys a couple of lines from the book Access All Areas, written and put out in 2005 by the late Jeff Chapman, also known as Ninjalicious. Highly recommend anyone in this hobby who is serious about it. Hit the link in the uh, description of the podcast and get yourself a copy of access all areas make sure you read it i've read it four times so jeff chapman doesn't talk a lot about women in uh, specifically he doesn't really separate them from the men he just really puts everybody in as explorers so we're not going to talk about women specifically but what zay did talk about was um running and that she hardly has ever had to run in a situation but she did have to run once and Jeff has a pretty good paragraph here about the topic of running so here's what he has to say this is on page 146 of access all areas don't run unless you're sure it's your best way out of a situation running is not just an admission of guilt but of serious guilt that can't be explained away if you run, your pursuers are likely to assume you were up to something much more serious than just harmlessly looking around, and this will increase their determination to catch you. Furthermore, if you make someone go to all the trouble of chasing you, this will almost certainly increase their determination to punish you, if they do catch you, since no one wants to do all that work for nothing. People get cranky when they're hot and sweaty. So take Jeff's advice, guys, and if you are going to run, and if you absolutely feel you need to run, make sure that you have the ability to run faster and get away. Also, it's also a good idea if you're with a group to decide ahead of time if you're caught, are you going to run, are you going to play dumb, or are you going to hide? Make sure you guys know ahead of time because you don't want one person to run and get away and the other two to stay behind and get caught or vice versa. So anyways, that's what Jeff Chapman has to say on page 146 of Access All Areas about the topic of running. All right, guys, that wraps it up. This is the end of this episode of my podcast, Access All Areas. I am getting away from the weekly or bi-weekly thing. I'm really just going to put out a podcast when I have the time or when I have someone who I would like to speak with. I'm not going to do this on an every week basis. So hope you guys have liked them so far. I have a bunch of other guests that I want to have, but you know, life gets busy uh, and I don't always have time. So thank you so much to Zay for joining us. She was a fantastic guest. Make sure you hit her links down below. She's on Instagram and on Facebook as Zenning with Zay. So that's it. That wraps up this episode. I hope you guys have liked it. And uh, we'll talk next time, guys. Peace.